Zener diodes um, have have some particularly unique um, sets of sort of specifications. Now, remember, a, a Zener diode has uh, this characteristic where I, I, uh, it has a very well controlled breakdown voltage. So we have a current versus voltage. And, and the Zener uh, starts off looking just like a normal diode. Um, it, it has the exponential forward. And then we have a reverse current, which is very, very close to zero. And then it, it uh, falls off very rapidly at some reverse voltage. And I'll zoom in and make a better uh, drawing of that. And roughly speaking, we could say we have VC. Now this would be when we have the diode um, in a circuit um, that might look like this. That's the symbol for a Zener diode um, ground and we might have plus 10 volts and uh, say 500 ohms, something to limit the current. Um, this is the general shape of a Zener diode. Now, of course, you could use it <clears throat> as a regular forward bias, but this well-controlled, well-defined reverse um, breakdown voltage is really useful. But the data sheet gives you all kinds of this, all kinds of stuff, and, and it's, it's maybe hard to understand exactly what you've got. Um, the first thing you got to do is is figure out which diode you're working at working with, and so your kit has two different ones. Well, let's say that this is the one that's in your kit, the um, uh, one in forty seven thirty five A. I think most of you might have actually had the uh, uh, seven thirty A. Uh, this one up here, but but I'll, I'll look at it as if we've got this one. Um, you, it, the the way to pull these things out is is just the same. So if we if we if we make a, a close up right in this area here of, uh, of um, well, I don't really need that vertical line, do I? Uh, <clears throat> horizontal line, and I need an eraser. So if we if we do a, a close up, that voltage, and we've got current. I'll put in that, that line, but um, we, we have a, a Zener dial or a Zener voltage or current characteristics that um, rise very sharply. Uh, that wasn't good enough. Oops. It rises very, very sharply um, from a very negative voltage. But it definitely has some some non-zero slope and some operation in there. And we'd we'd love to have just one voltage to define that, but there's really a bunch of stuff to understand. So um, we've got VZ at IZT1, and we've got IZT1 and IZT2, and uh, we've got a reverse leakage current um, at at this uh, VR, and then we've got a dynamic resistance at these two different settings, and then we've got a surge current. Or a regulating current that we can um, handle, and and uh, all of these is like, what does all this mean? Um, I first want to draw your attention to it. It does show you that it's it's all at twenty five degrees C, but there's actually some more important details there. Um, it's based on diode measurements at thermal equilibrium while maintaining lead temperature at thirty degrees C plus one degrees C, um, measured nine and a half millimeters from the diode body. Um, and it's valid, uh, the, the different points in these, but basically the status sheet is valid provided that electrodes at a distance of four millimeters from the case and are kept at ambient temperature. Uh, these, are, these can be very important uh, kinds of notes. You really have to go look at notes like that uh, to understand that you are using and measuring things uh, correctly, at least um, maybe not for lab class necessarily, but. Um, if you're using something like this professionally, then you really need to make sure that you uh, uh, that you're using it in the uh, the way it's intended and expected. So, uh, what do these numbers mean? <clears throat> so, first, um, uh, we have a um, we could we could understand that we've got um, some some data point 
couple of different data points where we're measuring it and, and there's a, a best fit line. And um, we have a test current. So this, this vertical scale is current. So we've got a test current, I, Z, T, and, and I think that's uh, I, Z, T, one here. And we've got a voltage that occurs at is a V, Z, two, or a V, Z, T, one. T stands for test. Um, and, and it really would be a, a negative voltage on, on that scale, but they'll usually show it as a, as a, as a positive voltage. Um, because that's kind of the voltage you'd be applying or seeing at it from here down to ground, uh, because you would often put the diode in backwards. So we've got uh, those two. And um, <clears throat> uh, so let's see, how should I explain this? So um, you, can, you can say that, that uh, Vz is equal to uh, Vz, um, not plus R Z I Z. Okay, so how'd I come up with that? Um, uh, well, R Z is um, is um, we, we've got this this dynamic uh, resistance uh, for a, a voltage and a, a current and and some value uh, that you're you're actually given. So at, at 41 milliamps for this diode, um, we have a, a dynamic resistance, this RZ of, of two ohms. So RZ is equal to um, two ohms at um, 41 milliamps. If, if we pick a different current, then we're, we're somewhere else on this scale, right? So it's, it's important to know precisely what that current is that we're looking at, and that's 41 milliamps in, in this case. And uh, Vz for that would be um, 6.2 volts in that case. So um, then we could say that uh, Vz naught, Vz naught is this uh, intersection right here. Let's change to a different color there, VZ naught. VZ naught uh, would be, um, if we just solve that equation, we've got uh, V2 minus uh, RZ, IZ. So that would be 6.2 minus um, two times 0 0.041. And we would have a, a value for Z naught of 6.118 volts. And, and that could be useful. You've got a couple of points now um, defining this line. You've, you've got an equation that defines the line. You've, you've got a couple of ways of, of looking at it. Um, we, we also sometimes would like to know what the, the knee voltage is. That, that would be where, um, where we say it's kind of uh, this, uh, curvy part. That's what uh, um, uh, the other value is. Um, <clears throat> so uh, IZT2 and IZT1, uh, you can give those for the, or use those to, to find the knee voltages. And, and I should point out that the slope of this line is one over uh, RZ. And, and for this particular diode, that would be one over two for this one at, uh, well, at 41 milliamps. That, that's the, uh, the tangent place. Um, <clears throat> We could look at uh, um, some values of, of what you might have. Um, so if we had uh, an open circuit, so let's see, we've got, uh, let's have uh, 
Um, I'll just I'll just retry. I don't think I can erase that. So I'll just retry this. Um, if we've got um, rounder, we've got uh, Vs of some kind and uh, 500 ohms to limit the current. And we have a V out right there. And, and if we don't have, if, if we've got a load, but the load is uh, um, infinite, so we'll just ignore it, an open circuit case. Um, <clears throat> so a load is equal to infinity. Um, I is equal to I Z is equal to um, V S um, minus uh, V Z, the, the voltage on the Zener, um, divided by 500 plus R Z. And if V S is equal to 10 volts, um, then if we solve for current, it should be 7.731 milliamps. And uh, V out would then be uh, V Z naught plus I Z R Z, uh, which would be six point one three five volts. So you could you could solve it and and, and find the voltage across it. Um, line regulation and load regulation are important points that uh, I, I tried to show in lab, but I don't think I showed very successfully because we didn't really have a very real case. Um, but if we if we had that same circuit, so we've got, um, we still have, a Zener diode going to ground and we've got VS and we've got uh, 500 and we have V out and we've got an R load here. I'll add that in because we might use it, but, but first we'll look at the, the line regulation. Um, so if, uh, if we have Vs, if it has a plus minus one volt uh, change, um, then the change in V out is equal to Rz over Rz plus um, that R 500 um, times the change in Vs. So it's a divider. So that's at two over 502 uh, times the change in Vs, which was uh, one volt. And we've got uh, 0 0.00398 um, time, times Vs. Uh, <coughs> And so um, in that case, uh, the, the change in V out over the change in Vs would be 0 0.00398 for one volt um, change or uh, 3.98 um, millivolts per volt. That's a, a really good job of, of reducing variation. So you, you wouldn't expect your your line, your, your voltage source to have a, a range of one volt. But if it did, the output is V out, this reference right here, which is what we usually use Zeners for, um, it would only change by three or four millivolts. A tremendous improvement um, in, in um, the, the variation in that output. Now, if we uh, want to look at uh, lo uh, line variation, Let's, uh, let's try black. <clears throat> or large, sorry, load regulation. Now we have the change in V out for the change in um, the load current. <clears throat> well, um, so if we, we've got a, a load here now um, by KCL at uh, this node right here, then we've got uh, um, the, the current coming in. I is equal to IZ plus IL. So we've got a, a current I here. Um, <clears throat> and I is equal to constant. So we, we're, we're, we're saying that we've got a, a good current source. And um, 
uh, v out. If we had a one, uh, um, if the load was causing um, um, one milliamp, then um, delta v out would be R z times uh, delta i z, which would be two times uh, zero point uh, zero zero one. It's really a negative, I guess. Um, which would be negative 0 0.002 volts. And we had a one milliamp change. So uh, we've got a delta uh, V out over delta IL, right? The, the load current change by one milliamp. And our units are now volts over amps or volts per milliamp or millivolts per uh, milliamp. So we've got a, um, We've got a two millivolt change. So we've got two millivolts for a uh, one um, milliamp change for one milliamp. So we've got negative two um, millivolts per milliamp um, load regulation. That's really how both of those would work. 